بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها صدق الله العلي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah Rabbul Izzat has given us the tawfiq to be in the house of Allah Indeed, <coughs> this blessing of sitting in the house of Allah, it is a great fadl of Allah. We should thank Allah for this great ni'mat and make shukr upon this. Allah Rabbul Izzat will grant us tawfiq more and more, insha'Allah. The more we try to value these such gatherings, uh, in which the words of Allah and the words of Rasulullah sallallahu spoke about, it will make our afterlife much better, inshallah. And this is what we need. Who knows through which good deed our sins are forgiven. And Allah Ta'ala will grant us Jannah, inshallah, one day. Who knows which gathering it will be, the means of us getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should ask Allah in our hearts even now, to Allah give me tawfiq to sit in more and more majalis, bayans, durus that take place in the house of Allah, inshallah. Allah will grant us tawfiq. The ayat which I have read, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا It talks about tazkiyah to nafs. Nafs which has to be purified, has to be cleaned, has to be <coughs> taken care of from all the evils and the vials and all the filth that builds up inside which leads it towards disobedience of Allah. Hadrat Murana Salim Dorat Sab, Dhamad Barakatuhum here mentions by saying, the objective of tazkiyah or purification is to acquire abdiyat. To acquire abdiyat is the core objective of tazkiyah. The definition of abdiyat is that one becomes a true slave of Allah Ta'ala. Me and you have to ask ourselves the question, I am Allah's slave, Allah has made me, He is my master, hence I am Allah's slave. But am I living my life as a true slave of my master? And if I am not, we should look into our lives, okay, what are those things which are, which are becoming a barrier in me, becoming a true slave of Allah. Because a slave at all times thinks of himself as nothing. It does not matter what admirable qualities he may possess, the slave constantly knows his status. No matter how much you praise a slave, <coughs> no matter how much you praise a slave, at the end of the day he is still a slave. <coughs> he is still under somebody else's... A guardianship or he is under the care of somebody else he has a master above him, a mawla above him, an aqa above him he is still a slave so a slave can never feel as though I have become something because he is still a slave likewise me and you, we are the slaves of Allah but what we, what, how much we acquire we are still nothing compared to Allah we are nothing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how our relationship should be with Allah. That I am nothing, He is everything. I am nothing, He is everything. This is called true humility. One of, we should all submit to Allah, we should attribute all goodness to Allah, and know that everything that we have is from Allah and belongs to Allah alone. I have hives in my heart, full quran in my heart, for example. Allah has given me that. If Allah wills, He'll snatch you away tomorrow morning. I have eyesight. Allah has given me the eyesight. If He wants to snatch me tomorrow morning, I am healthy. If Allah wants to give me disability tomorrow morning, everything is in the hand and control and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, we have nothing which is ours. Everything is Allah's. This is what we should try to understand. And in understanding the objective of life, time plays a very important role. Inshallah, today's topic will be on time, inshallah. There are four conditions in time. Number one, Ni'mat, number two, musibat, number three, ta'at, and number four, ma'asiyat. Four conditions. Every single second of my life and your life, 
All of us sitting here and listening are going through four conditions. Either one of these four. Ni'mat basically means a bounty. We're in a bounty of Allah. Or musibat, we're in a calamity from Allah. Or ita'at, we're in obedience to Allah. Or ma'asid, we are disobeying Allah. There is no fifth condition. These are the conditions of our life. We will experience, my friends, pleasure in our life in the time we have. And we'll experience calamities and displeasure in this time we have. I'll explain more further. Every condition, every state, every hal has a right. As an example, we have a, a condition of musibat. This is a hal, a stage. So what is the haq of musibat? Ulama have said, the haq of musibat is to make sabr. Likewise, we have the right of, uh, we have ni'mat. Ni'mat is a condition, a hal, a bounty of Allah. What is the right of the bounty? To make shukr. So sabr and shukr, these are two great a'mal uh, uh, which makes a person go to jinnat. But overall, every stage of our life we are undergoing some condition. To make it more easy, ulama have said, in a nutshell, that there are two rights upon every insan. Hakuki ibadat and hukuki awqat. The time has a haq and worship has a haq. But the difference between the two is, in the haq of ibadat you can make qadha. But in the haq of awqat and time, there is no qadha. Time is gone, it's gone. If I miss my fajr today, I woke up with dhuhr time, I could pray my fajr with dhuhr, qadha. If I miss my fasting in Ramadan due to illness, I could make qadha of them else time, in another time. Whereas time, you can't do the same with time. When a blessing was sent to me, I didn't make shukr, I can't make qadha for it because I will now be in a different time. So you can't make qadha of time. Once time has gone, we cannot bring time back. Uh, there's a saying uh, in English, time is gold. Use it, don't abuse it. But in Islam, time isn't gold. Time is more than gold. A few things, my friends, we have to realize. Number one, time is the measure of life. It is a trust from Allah. It is amanat. It is a gift from Khalid. Use it properly because this time will determine mine and your outcome for eternity in the year after. Number two, we are born in time, we live in time, we die in time. What we, whatever we do with time is what we do with our lives. Whatever, however I pass my time is how I pass my life. Number three, regarding time, we should learn to understand, to race against each other in acquiring the best deeds in this time we have. Number four, ulama have said, learn from the time you have wasted to improve my next year, inshallah. Learn from the time wasted. Also look for special and superior time. We know special time is before Maghrib. Special time is after Fajr till Ishraq. Special time is Tahajjud. Special time the day of Juma. Or the special nights during the year. Look for these special allocated times and work harder in these times. Well, I have also said, okay, plan and organize your time. Our eating, our sleeping, our walking, our talking, everything can be worshipped if it's done in the manner of the Qur'an and the way of Rasulullah Eight hours I sleep at night, if I go to sleep uh, in an un-Islamic way, it's gone to waste. But if I go sleep Islamically, that eight hours has been written down as worship. This is also ibadat. So we have to learn how to make our time valuable. Soon time will be up and all of us will leave this physical word as standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. محمد سيد الكونين وثق عليه محمد سيد الكونين وثق عليه والفريقين من عرب ومن عجم Salut